Hi everybody, welcome to another Python GIS tutorial. Uh, today we're going to cover how to use Python and GDAL to do some raster math. You can make your own raster calculator type expressions, um, do map algebra, things like that. Before we get started, just a reminder to check out the community page on the Open Source Options YouTube channel and fill out the poll that will give me information about the content you want to see me create. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. So we have our script up from the last video, which if you haven't watched it, go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just start a new blank script here. Oh, sorry, I clicked the wrong thing. We want a new script. All right, and I'm going to start out and we'll just import GDAL. And I'm going to clear up anything that's in my console over here. Okay. So you'll notice here, I'll drag this out of the way, that I have my DEM. Um, and if you don't have a DEM or don't know how to get one, go check out the video about how to download a DEM for free. And you can see how I got this DEM and choose one for your own area of interest. Okay, so I have this DEM. And what I want to do is I want to take this DEM and just do some various math operations on it. And then check the difference between the new DEM I create and the old one to see where it changed. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I basically want to get two copies of this, one that gives me the one I do map algebra on, my new map layer, and one that's going to give me the difference layer to change between the two. All right, so if you'll remember, um, a couple videos ago, we learned how to copy a raster, and this is where this is going to come into play because we want these new rasters to line up exactly, so we're just going to copy them, perform operations on them, um, and then write a new array to their layer, okay? So we're just gonna go ahead and use the same code and I'll walk through it step by step so that you know what's going on. So um, we'll call this our template is going to be the one we already have loaded, which for me is gonna be in C temp elevation ned 10m.tiff, and we're going to call this, uh, make an fn new, which is going to equal c temp, um, we'll call this new raster, which might overwrite something, but that's okay. And then we want fn for the difference between the two, and we'll call this c, c temp. Diff ra ah, raster dot tiff. Okay, so we've got those there. Um, what we want to do is we want to do ds template is going to equal gdal dot open fn template. So we're just going to open that raster up, and then we need a driver. So we're going to do driver if equals gdal dot get driver by name and gtiff. And if you have questions about this code, I've gone over it uh, more in depth in the last couple of videos, so go check those out. I'm going to breeze through it so we can get to where we're going faster. Okay, so now you want to go ds new equals driver tiff create copy. And here is where we're going to put in fn new ds template strict equals zero. All right, I'm going to just going to double check, make sure I have this code right, and then get back to you. Okay, it looks like this code is correct, so let's go ahead and do this again. So we're going to go ds diff equals driver tiff create copy. Actually. We yeah, we'll just do it this way. We want to create a new, we want to create copy, uh, fn diff ds template strict equals zero. All right, so that will give us two new rasters that we can then play around with. So what we need to do is we need to read in 
our first rash that we want to perform operations on. So we're going to call this band, it's going to be our base band, and it's going to equal, we're just going to read from our template rash through. So we're going to get ds template dot get rash through band one read as array. Now this works for a numpy array, and that's going to be our band base. So let's say what I want to do um, is I want to do band new. Okay, so I'm going to make a new band here. And we'll just start out with something simple. Let's do, uh, it's going to equal band base plus 100, okay? So we're just going to take that band and add 100 to everything. And we can go band diff equals band new minus band base. Okay. So we're just subtracting these two bands element for element. So what this band we should get when we look at this raster, it should be equal to 100 everywhere because that's the difference is 100. Okay. So we've got those. Now what we need to do is we need to write those bands to the rasters. So ds new equals, oh sorry, that's not what I want to do. I want to do ds new get raster band dot write array. And here's where I'm going to give it band new. I'm going to ds diff dot get raster band dot write array band diff. Okay, so we're going to that pretty quick. Um, the code's all up here. Hopefully you can follow that along. We'll go through in a minute and we can once we make sure this works and we can comment things out, comment things so you see what's going on. And then I'm just going to do iface dot add raster layer ds new. Oops, sorry. fn new. Give it the file name. iface dot add raster layer fn diff. Okay, and so these will add those in there for us to visualize. Okay, let's click run and see if I have any errors. Go ahead and click run, and sure enough, we have an error. Let me just check. Oh, I see what it is. I need to put tell which raster band I'm writing to, and it's one because these only have one band. And now let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save this and close it. So hold on for just a sec. All right, got the file saved. Let's go ahead and close our console. Um, we've got our diff raster. We've got our new raster. Oh, and look at this. Nothing changed. They're the exact same as this one. You can see just that these, these values are the same. And if I turn my value tool on, you'll see that everything's the same. So why could that be? Well, it could be because I made a mistake, and I already know what that mistake is. So let's go take a look here. Python console. I forgot to do a very important thing. And that's to close these data sets. So ds template equals none. ds new equals none. And ds diff equals none. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove these here, otherwise we'll get them piled up. So let's go ahead and click run. Okay. Now we are looking better. So let me save this and close it. Now you notice that what's going on here is that we have the same value shown here. Um, well, I don't know why this is highlighted. Let's see. Oh, because I pulled that over to it. Okay. So what's going on here is that I copied it and I didn't recalculate the statistics. And so the statistics are still showing up the same as this raster. If you look at our actual values, you can see our different raster is 100 everywhere. Just, and in some spots because of floating point math, it's going to be like 
just over 100, right? But basically it's 100 everywhere, okay? Look at that. And so if we take and look at our new raster and our 10 meter raster, you can see there's 100 difference between them in every situation. Cool. Okay, let's remove these. Let's, uh, there we go. And let's pull our console back up. Now let's try something different just to show how this difference raster can be really useful. We're not going to change any code for the difference raster. We're just going to change the relationship here. So we, if we do band base times 1.1, 1 .1, okay, and then we do um, let's try something else here and let's just add another factor onto that. Well, let's do that. We'll just do band base times 1.25. So that will give us a different value everybody for multiplying by basically increasing everything by 25%. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So let's go ahead and click run here. And everything's done. So I'm just going to save this and close it. You see our difference raster still shows the same thing, but we're getting different values for our difference raster. So let's go ahead and come in here. Let's do symbology. We'll just change this one to like a single band pseudo color. Let's do this. Uh, see all our color ramps here. Let's do something like, sure, like Virtus. So we got low values in blue. Ooh, I don't know why we have these min max values. We didn't update our statistics. So that's going to be a problem still. Let me just go ahead and we'll go in and we'll, we'll update these statistics so you can see what's going on here. So let's go back, go to our plugins, open our Python console. All right, guys, let's go ahead and compute these statistics. So what we'll do is we'll do ds new. We're going to get the raster band. And we're going to just type compute statistics, statistics. And we're going to put in a zero. And what that means is it's going to actually compute the real statistics and not just take a sample. It's going to force, there's going to be no approximation, it's going to be exact. I'm going to dsdiff.getrasterband1.computestatistix0. All right, so now we should get the actual numbers up there. Now... Well, I know we're going to have something weird happen, and I'll explain it when it happens. So let's go ahead and click Run here. Okay, there it is. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. We've got our code there. Um, and you'll notice we get these really big negative infinity values here. See that? And we have that right there. Those really big negative values, really small negative values. Let's just go ahead and fix that. So what's going on here? Is if we open this up, um, we have a no data value. Let's go to our source inf information. Where is our no data value? Our no data value is going to be negative, a really small negative number, if I can find it. Um, I'm not finding it. Anyway, oh, no, oh, that's origin. Depends. Oh, here we go. See, so here's our no data value, which is negative this number, which is about the biggest negative number you can get, or the smallest negative number you can get. And so we're taking that and we're multiplying it by 1.25, which means we're getting an even smaller negative number, which there's not enough memory in the float data type to store that. So we're getting these negative infinites, which is just reverting back to this really small negative number. Now, 
that's okay. We're just going to go ahead and see if we can symbolize this away on the different drafts real quick. And we're gonna, I'm going to do another video. The next video, actually, will probably be on no data because it takes a little bit of practice to learn how to deal with these no data values, and I don't have time to explain it here. So let's just go ahead and see if we can go to symbology. Let's just put our minimum value at zero. And let's click apply. And there you go. So there it is. So let's just go in here now and we'll uh, let's do a single band pseudo color and we'll apply that. Oh, let's just make that a zero again. And okay. So there you can see the difference raster. Okay, and so that gives you where the differences are and you'll notice these differences, you know, they mirror that elevation profile, but they're, you know, they're not exact. So that's how you can get that up. Let's pull our code back up real quick. Um, here's our code again, so you can take a look at this. Um, hopefully there's nothing really new and groundbreaking here. It should all be stuff we've covered before, except for um, just this really simple code right here. These two lines of code are the only thing that's new, and that's just doing math with NumP arrays. And you can do whatever math you want. You can pull in multiple raster bands. You can pull in five different raster bands and make an expression with them, and then just write that new raster, um, that new band, that band to a new raster. All right, compute the statistics, and you're off to the races. So we got bogged down a little with the compute statistics. Hopefully you guys get that figured out. If you don't, you have questions, please send me a comment below and I do my best to answer all those comments. Um, sometimes I don't get to them, but I try my best. And uh, thanks for watching guys. Like I said, next video will be on covering those no data values and handling them in your script. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.